Okay, well, that video processed. That last video, I just finished up my, my inking. And so now you can see I've covered my sketch. The only thing I have as a separate layer is my vaccine. Because I'm not sure yet if I want to include that. I like the little drop going on to the, the little flower leading to, you know, health and goodness with the heart. But it's maybe a little too busy. I don't know. I'm still unsure. So I have that turned off. Now what I can do is turn on the full white layer behind, the white bread layer, right? And then turn on my sketch or my line art layer alone. And I'm going to save this as a JPEG. So you want to save your work. Once you've finished your line art, you save your PSD. And then you also want to export as just a JPEG. You know, just showing your black line art very cleanly. And then I'm going to post that JPEG in Canvas. And that's the next step of the process. Just like some of the professional examples and student examples. We have a sketch, then we have clean line art. That is the goal. That's at a high enough resolution for printing. So this is at nine by 12 inches by 300 pixels per inch. And it was all created with our own hand. And I tried to make it as clean and as 100% opaque as possible. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And all of that is contained on one layer. Now in Photopea to set it up for coloring, I lock that layer. With the padlock, I'm going to unlock the color layer behind. And remember the way you set it up is like a sandwich with white bread on the bottom. So I'm starting fresh with a blank white, 100% opaque white bread layer with your line art as the black bread, I've renamed it at the top. And then the color, the filling of the sandwich, it's your peanut butter and jelly, it's your cheese, it's your lettuce. It's gonna be all these different layers that we fill the sandwich with. That's our digital coloring, but it is not on the white bread layer, and it is not on the, the line art layer, right? It is separate, it is free floating. So if I just look at the flat color layer alone, we just have these different cutouts of, of colored paper. And that's a good way to think about it. But when we turn the white layer on, we can see that color a little bit more clearly, and we can see the little anti-alias marks that are left behind. So now I have to have a way of choosing my colors. I could just use the color selector each time. But when I do that, I tend to pick really, really bold colors that are a little oversaturated and not grayed out enough. So I'll do that as an example you know, with the tier here. Once I already have the flat color, I can just use the paint bucket and change it. You know, it'll automatically change whatever I click on. But for some reason, it's taking a while to process here. <laughs> and so if I want the old color or back, 
I can use the eyedropper tool. which I have to find. <laughs> Where'd it go? Hmm. So the eyedropper tool, you can actually shortcut to by being on the brush tool or the paint bucket tool and holding down your, your option key or your alt key. And what that will do is change your tool to the eyedropper. But why do I not see it anymore? Hmm. That is a mystery. What happened to my eyedropper tool? So what do I mean? So if I use the brush tool, I'm on the flat color layer. I want to select a color I've already chosen, like the pink of the tongue. I can just hold down Option, and it will automatically select that layer into my foreground layer. And then I can use the paint bucket and drop that in for the color. Professor, the, the eye drop was underneath the crop tool. It's under the crop tool. Yeah, Strange. OK, yeah. So that's different than Photoshop. But yeah, the eyedropper is, is more useful to us at this point than the crop tool. But remember, whenever you open Photopea new, you get the defaults. And so the default is for that to be cropped. So you just want to change it to the eyedropper. But you can shortcut to it just by holding down Option with the paintbrush tool. Thank you, Patrick. So I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to steal this darker blue. And then I'm going to use the paint bucket to drop in the darker blue there. But what other colors do I want? Well, I like to use external references, right? And this site shows a lot of digital coloring. It's called Amino under comics. And this shows a lot of professional comics. And then this chat board here, gives the uh, the pellets that go with them. So this is coloring by Dave Stewart, one of my favorite colorists. You can see how subtle his flat colors are. And sometimes you can be really influenced by, by the pellets others use. I don't think that's a bad idea at all because you can steal colors just directly from any digital image. There are a lot of uh, artists that just create pellets so we can just look for, we could just look for a digital coloring palette that we think we might be interested in, right? Uh, within programs, this is for Procreate. They have their own set palettes for different uses, which can be useful. I actually quite like this one, just for my own taste. The Polys and Pels palette. And I don't even need to download it or use Procreate. The great thing is if it's a digital image, it can be used. So I'm just going to do a little screen grab of it. Maybe of both of these. And then I'll take that screen grab is on a Mac, Command Shift 4 for a targeted screen grab. Drop it into my folder of references. You see how that relates a lot to these kind of tattoo colors. And I'm going to open these. I was using this one last time. I'm going to keep using that one. I'm going to open them in uh, Photopea. And you can do the same thing in Photoshop. Because in order to steal the colors with the eyedropper tool, they have to be open within the program. So I'm going to say file, uh, open, I'm going to open both of these. So you can see them tabbed at the top here, move this one a little bit closer. 
And so skin tone, what should I use for my my weeping man skin tone? Maybe something a little swarthy. One of these. That's a good shadow tone. So I'm going to take my eyedropper tool. I'm going to select it. It's going to put it into my foreground box. It's going to carry that into this project. And then I have to go to my line art layer, my black bread layer. I can mark this with a color as well. So let's make it gray. And I'm going to use the magic wand. Select the empty space with contiguous turned on and a really high tolerance. Why not? And then hold down shift and select the other areas where this color might be useful. Right. Like the hands as well. It's taken a little while. And the fingers, all these individual contained shapes. And then I move to my flat color layer, and you can see all those selections are active. And I use my paint bucket and I drop it in. You see it filled the hands and it filled that. Now, why did it fill those but not this? Well, because all of those are actually touching through the, the empty white. But this is completely surrounded by the, the brown beard. So I'd have to click in there to get that to fill. But you want to keep your digital color separate from your line art. Right. OK. What other colors can I steal? I can steal from here. Uh, I think I stole the gold from here, the blue from here. When it's a photo, there are tons of variations, even just in the reds that look flat. You can see how the, my foreground color thing kind of flutters. So it just depends how technical you want it. And I can take that, and if I've already filled something, I can just use the um, the magic or the the paint bucket to replace it. But if I'm coloring something new, like the little frills on this epaulette, I have to use the magic wand again on the line art layer. If I do multiples, I hold down shift and select multiples. Where else might I want this red? Maybe in the, maybe here. Remember, I can always change it, but the first job is just to fill it all in. Maybe here, maybe inside the diamonds, or maybe the, outside border of these diamonds, maybe here, maybe for the berries. So I'm just doing a lot of selecting in the black line art layer. But this heart, maybe for the middle of this. Yeah, so lots of different places. And now I change to my flat color layer. You can see those selections are all active. And then I use my paint bucket. And most of them are going to fill automatically because there's nothing surrounding them. Come on. There we go. So they all. Fill, are there any that got missed? No, I think they all did it with one click. Then I can hit Command D to deselect. I can see how that color looks. It doesn't mean I'm, I need to keep it for all of it, but it looks pretty good. Now I go back to maybe this, and I think, oh, what's an interesting color I can use? Like that's an interesting sage color. Eyedropper, pick that color. Where can I use it? Maybe on the collar of the death mask. You can spend a lot of time kind of finding the right colors. But the goal here is just what's called flatting, to fill in every contained shape. Even ones that you want to fill with white, you want to fill. So that they're easy to change and to correct.